Hello, welcome to a review of uh, geopolitical events from time, which I'm just going to have a scroll through and um, um, just see what I think for each one. There's um, five votes this year, 2017. Italy's constitutional referendum from 2016. Um, Imagine your country has had 63 governments in 71 years. Now you're faced with a series of political crises, you the oscillating political system can't manage. That's the problem Italian Prime Minister made to Renzi post upon taking office in 2014. The solution drastically reduced the scope and power of the Senate in favour of empowering Italy's lower house of parliament of other structural legislative reforms. While this would Bring political stability to Rome, it's far from certain that they'll pass. By promising to resign should the referendum fail, Renzi has made this referendum on himself rather than the merits of the reforms. And as former British Prime Minister David Cameron now knows that's a tactical error. Renzi's tried walking the pledge back, realising that his 30% approval rating won't give the referendum the push it needs. Europe surely hopes it passes a chaotic political transition in Italy is yet another headache it doesn't need. Um, that's not one I've seen aware of any kind of constitution. I don't know much about Italy's constitution in general. Um, <clears throat> but yes, yeah, so we can't really comment on that one. France's presidential election. France is at the forefront of Europe's battle with radical Islamic extremism and ISIS and has paid a steep price for it. Attacks in Paris and Nice have bled into the country's politics and the Front National, Marine Le Pen, anti-immigrant, anti-Islam, anti-EU, has seen the most, been the most immediate beneficiary. It has also helped the current centre-left President Francois Hollande, who has a 15% approval rating, is bogged down by a seemingly unreformable economy and continuing security worries. And its former centre-right President Nicolas Sarkozy, whose comeback bid is often sidetracked by his own brash rhetoric and string of political scandals. Finally, there's former Prime Minister Alain Jupe, also of the centre-right, who is positioning himself as a fields competent centrist. France's saving grace is its two-round presidential system, with most polls saying that Le Pen would defeat in the second round, just as her father Jean-Marie Le Pen was in 2002. If Le Pen wins the presidency, she's vowed to hold on an you know, in-out referendum on France's own EU membership. Brexit is trouble enough. Brexit would undermine the entire EU. Now this is actually really worrying. If France further destabilises the European Union, which at the end of the day was always a Union of countries working together and for stability, really, at the end of the day. That's the, the ultimate reason the EU was formed because we need stability after the war, really. Well, the UN, but the, the EU was offered for stability and economic stability, and I think. The rise of the uh, Le Pen is, is worrying, and that has to be countered with. Uh, well, I'm just going to try and call this. So uh, it sounds like Le Pen have are uh, benefiting a lot from kind of stirring up of hatred, I suppose. Well, I suppose by that's what they do. Centre right Sarkozy. I mean. Like I do remember Sarkozy a bit, and he seemed like a moderate kind of like right politician, a bit like kind of Bill Clinton of, of France, really, kind of like li liberal Democrat kind of um, politician, kind of moderate socially but economically laissez-faire, as it were, neoliberal kind of economics. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds. I mean, hopefully. I mean, if, those, if, if there's those choices, really. You know, obviously, want Holland 
you know, Holland it would be good if he could carry on and try and it sounds it sounds like he's a bit entrenched, but he could probably you know, go some kind of surge, but it sounds like it's unlikely but anyway, we've got to the next one. I spent two months nominating him. Prince is president of the Spring 2017. Germany's federal elections fall to the This is quite interesting. EU certainly can't withstand the German exit or even a retreat from the European Union. Leadership and make no mistake, Angela Merkel, still a person best able to provide that leadership, is now weaker politically than any other point of her decade plus career as Germany's Chancellor. Merkel has shown herself to be a remarkably deft politician throughout the years. She even is in danger of getting such as the political wake of the refugee crisis. Her loss in popularity has fueled the rise of the alternative for Deutschland, which um, kind of for Deutschland immediately just title it's you know, slightly kind of sound like a, a British UKIP kind of like for Deutschland UKIP is just like oh, the sound of it. A rad, rapidly anti-Islam and anti well, there you go, it's just basically the German UK. AFD has made impressive games in the regional elections since the in 2013 as it attended the country's 16 parliaments to date. It's also poised to be a player in federal elections in the fall of 2017. Merkel is still widely believed to win, run and win these elections. The more problems mount, the more likely uh, Merkel burns bows out. The other time favourite to replace her would be Finance Minister Wolfgang Schubel, a fiscal hawk, whose standoffish demeanour would do little to boot. Things are not basically looking good for the EU. It looks like the EU is going to be completely dismantled if this, if these short, um, you know, kind of political issues that are coming up are. To be believed, and it sounds like the EU is basically just disintegrated. Um, Iran's president, when well, that's like you know Germany and France, things. Uh, it, worst case scenario, obviously, if, if this the right kind of has a very big victories in both those countries, the uh, yeah, basically that will be the end of the EU forever. That be it will just be completely disintegrated. All that work that took you know, a lot of people a lot of time to build up, working together and the kind of um, progressive left in them in Europe, and we'll just disintegrate. We'll, we'll return back to a much divided continent and area. And it's not really good for anybody, is it? Um, Iran's presidential election, spring 2017. Anti-establishment challenges aren't really a concern in Iran, given that the Guardian Council, the 12-person body that ensures the country's politics line up with Islamic law, vets and approves all candidates who stand in elections. Iran's complex government structure means the Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei is the one who fills the final shots backed by Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. Still, as we've seen with current modern President Hassan Rouhani, presidents determine the country's near-term trajectory. It was Rahini who passed through the nuclear deal, albeit with Khamenei final sign off. <coughs> yeah, Iran still struggles to find its, pass, its footing past sanctions. Whether the Ira Iranian people will elect a moderate or a hardliner will determine how friendly Iran's overtures will be to the rest of the world, and vice versa. Iran also has a history of volatile presidential uh, elections. When hardliner President Mohammadi. Mo Nahoud Ahmadinejad won re-election in 2009. Accusations of the election results were rigged, touched off months of social unrest, protests and violence. And while Ahmadinejad was planning a comeback presidential campaign just last week, Khamenei effectively barred him from running, claiming he was too divisive a figure. This next election will be the most important Iran has held in a generation. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. Revolutionary Guard pause. And so they've got a moderate in the minute. Because I'm a bit behind with Iranian politics. I don't really, um, okay, so this is related to 12 person body that ensures country bodies and line up with Islamic. I hate all this stuff. And church and state should be separate. 
I, I don't even understand why anybody would possibly even try and integrate church and state. Um, I mean, we have that in Britain. I wish we didn't. I don't think we should. I think we should be a republic. I've always believed that. Even since being a child, even a teenager, young teenager, I, church and state should just have no, and that, you know, church and state could be the same for anything. It's separate those things out. And that's why, you know, a lot of the problems, a lot of the reasons for the problems in the Middle East is basically, apart from the imperialism um, of the West, historically, a lot of the reasons for the problems in the Middle East is obviously it's not radicalised forms of religion. So, um, how, how can the world, how can the world um, make these kind of Society's better is by yeah, in a way maybe probably converting them to a more secular view of how to run society. That doesn't mean everybody has to convert to not believe in God or being an atheist or agnostic or whichever, but that education has to start and that has to I mean that makes me sound like I'm saying all oh, Muslims are stupid, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is <coughs> people still have the freedom and yeah it's just it's, 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 it's the whole I mean I, I guess it's what I know of Iran and hearing about it it's less hardline than it used to be with religion back in the day but, uh, I think the best the sooner we just get don't have to live under the oppressive religion in general we'll generally live in a much better world than there's any wars about nothing but Onwards, it's the last one. Now this is the big one, probably China's leadership transition. Given that how big China is in terms of the global economy, yeah, the biggest political transition the world faces of the coming year doesn't involve a natural election. China is gearing up for its 19th Party Congress, where many of the country's top leaders for the next five years will be selected. But given the scale of turnover this time around, 2017's Congress could easily shape. China's trajectory for the next 15 years. About half of China's powerful 18 member Politburo will be swapped out next fall. More importantly, five of the seven members of the Politburo Standing Committee, the ultimate arbitrage power in the country, are scheduled to be replaced. The only Standing Committee members who will remain are President Xi Jinping and Premier uh, Li Qigong, who will serve out their second and final terms until 2022. Their eventual successors will be chosen to the ranks of the Standing Committee, so who makes so who ends up making it matters a great deal, especially as China is in the midst of an ambitious and difficult reform of its economy. If these reforms get off track, the reverberation will be felt around the world. Oh, that is very interesting, actually. If you've got, like, just because obviously China is really the global leader in manufacturing and um, most industry, which still drives the economy in terms of the world. So, if um, those reforms go off track, as it said, that could cause some real problems. Um, I need to probably uh, read more on China's political system. I don't really know that much about it. Really. Oh, I know, so I know the history, you know, like. Cultural Revolution, the uh, Mao, I know all about that, I know about, well, further back even, further back in the history of China. Uh, but it's not really relevant to today, it's just a aside. Um, but yeah. So. Don't be warning too much now, so I can kind this one here, in this analysis and. Talking about politics and the five votes that will matter for the world in 2017. I know it's been long, it's been quite dry, but just, you know, there's politics, there's talking politics, isn't it? So, goodbye.